Are you guys ready to take LEDs from scratch to a fully sequential circuit board and do it by hand? Because I'm going to teach you. I don't like doing it anymore, but I think you should know. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Chris and if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and click that little notification icon so that you can get all the information about the parts, the skills and the business of building custom lights because today I'm gonna be teaching you more about building sequential lights, which everybody's been asking about by the way. And you can see in the background these lights that are just doing all the crazy animation. I'm gonna teach you how I make those from the ground up, some of the problems and some of the awesome sides of using these types of parts. So let's get into it. Something that I used to do all the time was take power LEDs, which is an LED I'm gonna show you in just a minute, and I would assemble these little circuit boards and make different shapes and designs, and it was actually a really great way for me to learn as a builder how I can make my own ideas come to life as sequential animations. For you, if it's something that you wanna to do to learn this stuff, I really think this is the great stepping stone that you need to learn about sequential lighting and how to do it. Okay, so we are gonna start with some very interesting little parts here. We've got our power LEDs. Now these are all a bunch of individual little chips that will pop out and I will attach them to this circuit board. Now, in the past, I think where I went wrong a lot of times was I would use a very hot soldering iron that's not heat adjustable. It's this bad boy right here. It's a really good soldering iron, don't get me wrong. I love it. It's been through the trenches with me, but it's probably not as delicate as it needs to be for certain operations that we do here now. So, I was messing up LEDs, I believe, where I was overheating them. So be careful, if you're gonna mess with soldering irons and hitting that little LED and that solder pad for too long of a time, you're gonna mess up inside parts of the LED, which in this case then could damage the actual ghost controller. That's not good. So I had to learn from it. I'm gonna show you the better way of doing this now and hooking up the power LEDs in a way that doesn't give them too much heat. It doesn't mess with the circuit board and it's just kind of freaking cool. So we're gonna talk about solder paste. This beautiful little guy is solder paste. Let's give you some specs on it. Low temp, 15, I don't know any of this stuff. Jack just ordered the stuff that's the right thing and now I feel better about it. It's expired. Okay, now I look stupid, but that's okay. Let's just pretend that today's November 15th. Got it? Okay. Moving on, I am going to put this solder paste down on this circuit board. Yeah. And then I'm gonna stick these little guys on top. I'm gonna use my beautiful heat gun that I told you about before, and it's gonna come out looking something like, uh, yeah, this right here. And then I'm gonna show you how to make it so that it will work with the sequential controller. And uh, here we go. Okay, so you can see I don't have that much solder left in here. And I hope that because it's past the expiration date, it's still good, which I think it will be just because I'm willing it to happen. This is gonna work. Gotta show you guys good stuff. So I've got a couple different little application needles that came with this. So I'm gonna hook one up right now and hopefully it doesn't have too much stuff backed up in it. And I'm gonna give it a little push, see if I can't get it to come out the top. A big push, I mean. It's coming. Okay, good. Got her. So, here's what solder paste does. I'm just gonna have to do this a few times like a weirdo. The solder paste is going to be put very sparingly on the little connection pads, which I'll show you in a second, so that when we put the LED on top and we hit it with heat, it's gonna like turn that solder paste liquid, which will bond to the circuit board and to the LED, and it'll do it at a lower temperature than the soldering iron does. That thing's probably like 700 degrees plus, and the heat gun is gonna be not nearly as hot as that, and we can adjust the heat on the heat gun so that it's not gonna be too intense. So let's just show you. All right, so looking at this really close, what you can see on these little power LED strips, and I'll provide links and stuff to where you can buy all this stuff if you wanna mess with it. We don't sell it anymore, it's just not my bag, but whatever. So we've got one little section right here 
that is gonna connect to one part of the LED, and then this section on the top is gonna connect to the other part of the LED. So you need to put one little dab of the solder paste on top, one little dab on the bottom, and then we're gonna lay all those little LEDs out and then blast it with air. All right, so you can't see super, super well. This isn't like the best lens to show you fine detail, but I have very ugly little lines of solder paste on here. What's gonna happen though, is that when it hits heat, it's just gonna completely liquid out and it's gonna spread to everywhere that it can attach to evenly. So that's good. That means that you don't have to be a perfectionist on when you put it down. You just don't wanna put too much so that thing is super freaking hard to squeeze down on. I don't know if that's just because it's old, but we'll see. Now for our LEDs. So I need eight. So I'm just gonna peel them back. That's four, five, six, seven, eight. And now what we're gonna do is look at the LEDs themselves. We're gonna wanna get an idea of which side is which. Let's see if I can zoom in on that little guy. Ooh, you see that? really hard to tell but on one end of it we've got a couple little vertical lines that I can see right there so I can tell that on one just by looking at the circuit board I can tell that it says plus on this side and minus on that side so if I set this strip up so that pluses are on that side and I put my little vertical lines so that it mimics that then I'm good this might be the most important part of working with the power LEDs and the LED strip circuit board that we're, we're modifying right now, is you've got to do it backwards. That's the key, because if you hook up power to where they want you to hook up power, then you're not going to have an easy time separating all of the grounds. Isolating grounds is the whole key to doing custom sequential lighting, because ghost modules send out ground signals, not power. They all share the same amount of 12 volts from the car, from the ghost module itself, the LEDs do, but they don't share ground. Each individual channel has a ground pulse that it gets from the ghost module. So if you solder on the LEDs completely backwards, what you're gonna get is one tiny little circuit that you have to slice through so that you can isolate that ground. It's not gonna make a lot of sense until I show you, but I said it, I said it. All right, so if you look on this thing, it's got a little plus mark on the top and a little minus mark here on the bottom. And so when I'm hooking up these power LEDs backwards, I wanna make sure that when I push a positive signal to the top and a ground signal to the bottom, that they don't turn on. So I've got a set of boards that I already made a while back right here, and I'm going to first demonstrate putting the power wire to the one that says plus and the ground wire to the one that says negative and then I'm gonna swap them and we'll see what the difference is because everything will light up red. So first I'm going to do it the proper way. I got power and ground doing what it's supposed to be. Let's check to make sure we got voltage. We definitely got voltage. Power and ground, nothing. Now opposite and ooh, ooh that's bright. Right in my eyeball. So here's the cool thing. If I hook up the ground wire here and I hook up the power wire here, it still lights up there. See how they're isolated? So I mentioned that there's some problems using the type of LEDs that I'm gonna show you about today. But I will say that the upside is so good that that downside shouldn't scare you away. And let me explain. If you look, I've got these lights in the background and they are doing all their animation. But if you notice at the bottom, there's some of them that are stuck on. Turn off the animation really quick. Check that out. See how they're still stuck on? That's a problem. The reason is something about these types of LEDs, over time, it can decide that it's just gonna give up and die. When it dies, it kills one of the little channels on the ghost module. That sucks, because if you can imagine, this guy's got his GTR, he walks out to it, and there's just three little LEDs that are on. That's not good. He's gonna worry about his battery, he's just gonna think that it looks stupid, they don't work the way they're supposed to, I'm in trouble, 
He's got a super expensive set of lights that he paid for and now they're not working the way they should. That's why I don't recommend you do these for Nissan GTRs. It took me a long time to figure out a better way to perform the function that these things were performing and I don't think you should have to go through all that. I think you can use these using what I teach you today to produce really cool stuff for your own car that you can always modify. You can always reprogram your ghost modules because we're teaching you about programming ghost modules. And there's just so much good in this that I don't think other people should not learn from what I've had to go through in my particular experience. So I will show you now how to work with these ghost module powered power LEDs. Yeah. Now that I got Kevin here, I can actually do this way better and show this without screwing it up, trying to film everything and do all the work myself. But basically, I did a quick little test. I did the solder paste. I just put one LED on, and then I have the solder paste all the way down the rest of the strip like you saw me do earlier. So now I have to go through. I checked to make sure that when I put ground to power and power to ground, it lit up how it was supposed to, like I talked about before. Um, so I'm just going to lay all these individual LEDs down make sure that they are centered over the solder paste, and then I'm going to use the heat gun to turn that solder paste into hard solder. And for that, I'm gonna just use a little tool, and we will put this in fast motion so it doesn't suck to watch. Now I'm gonna heat them with the middle setting on this, I have the heat dialed all the way to as hot as it can be. And what'll happen if you go too hard with the heat gun is it'll just blow the LEDs right off the solder paste. So you don't wanna do that. But basically, I'm just gonna let this heat up that solder paste and go back and forth with it. And then as it gets really warmed up and it's doing its job, it's gonna kinda start bubbling a little bit and you'll see the LEDs actually moving as they settle into place. So on this first one, I've already got the solder kind of hardened. So I'm gonna do that one last. And instead I'm gonna focus on this first guy. And what you'll see is it just starts moving by itself a little bit. And if you're really lucky, it'll go right where you want it. I tend to give it some help just so that it doesn't go into the wrong spot. Tap it down a little bit and it'll eventually find its home where it needs to be and then I can move on to the next one. Now what we gotta do is let it cool down a little bit because the stone's retaining so much heat that if I just start messing with this thing right now, it's actually pumping enough heat to keep that solder slightly liquidy. So instead of picking it up immediately, I'm kind of giving it a second and then I'm gonna move it around to somewhere not so concentrated with heat. I'm gonna let it chill for a second. Those LEDs are still hot. So if I hook them up to power right now, what you'll see is they'll come on kind of dim because they're like, they feel like they've been on for hours and hours. They're like in a weakened state. As it cools down, or once it's to the point where they're not gonna fly off the circuit board, you can actually blast them with air, which is what I'm gonna do in a second, and that'll just cool down the whole thing kind of like a heat sink does um, to make sure that LEDs don't get too hot. So, I think, looks like it's about ready to go. Let's blow them off. I have two different circuit boards here. One of them has been prepped to be mated with a sequencer, so it's got all the LEDs that are on there are on their own channel. I'm going to use these things for some GTR rear side markers. We don't offer these anymore this way, but at the time that I sold this job to a customer that's been waiting forever, this is what we were using for all of our sequential work. So I've got to fill that order, but I also figure it's the best way to teach on how to do this stuff. And so I made this, which is not the same color, but it's the same exact type of LED. Everything else is identical. And if you look right now, when I touch power and ground to it, it's gonna light all of them up. And what I want it to do is this. I want it to just individually be able to power up each LED. So I'm gonna show you how we do that. And we're gonna do it by making little cuts in the circuit board. Now the only difference between these two is that I'm gonna wanna fire two LEDs each channel. 
So I'm only gonna make a couple different cuts on this one, whereas this one has um, nine different individual LEDs separated out. One of the things I always try to do is just show you guys tools that you have access to. So a little box cutter and a needle nose set of pliers. I could use any kind of pliers for this actually um, because it's just for the box cutter. So I'm gonna just snap off, get a nice sharp end to this box cutter. And then I am going to make some little cuts in the circuit board. So if you remember, we soldered the LEDs on backwards. And the reason we did that is because if you look on the board, you've got one little circuit that says it's for power running along the top. And that's basically a little piece of copper that just runs the whole length of the board. And on the other side, we've got a length of copper that runs down and attaches to the other side of the LED for ground, but that also has what's called pass-throughs. So we've got the whole backside is connected to that ground circuit which means that if we wanted to just solder these LEDs on the right way, then we would have to cut both the ground circuit on the top and all the way across the back. That doesn't really make sense because it's so much easier to flip the LED, put it on backwards, and now we just have one little thing that we have to slice. And to do it, we're gonna use the box cutter. I'm just going after the first pair of LEDs and I'm just chopping right through it. Now alternatively, you can do this before you have the LEDs on in place and just cut through the circuit board with a Dremel and just slice them up however you need to have them. Uh, in this case, I just kind of want to show you the whole process. So I'm going to go through and every two LEDs, I'm going to make a slice through that harness or through that, uh, that circuit. And then we're going to test them and make sure that only two LEDs turn on each time we move the ground wire connection. I have this little piece modified. Now I do need to make a couple other changes to it because this is gonna go in the, the set of GTR lights over there that had those LEDs that were stuck on. And the reason that they're stuck on is because I used the soldering iron when I made those originally. And I think it just damaged a couple of the internal LEDs. So instead of messing with that circuit board and putting new LEDs on and just changing existing stuff, I'm gonna give it a fresh replacement section just for that lower part of the lightning bolt. And to do that, I have to make some further modifications, but either way, this thing now has four individual channels that will connect to the ghost module, and it's gonna replace and fix the parts that are damaged on it. Now we're just gonna move over to the red LEDs so I can show you a start to finish completion of the project while I make the rear side markers. I have here the inside of a Nissan GTR rear side marker, and all I'm gonna do is we've removed the red LEDs from inside of it, or if you have the JDM version, um, they don't even have the LED, it's just a clear lens, and we wanna have all of our red LEDs packed in there so that they can be functional. But this particular customer wanted to have the fully animated type, so I have the board like I just showed you guys, and I've separated all of the individual ground connections, so now I'm gonna solder up a bunch of individual wires to the circuit board, and then I'm gonna run all those wires out through this housing, out the back, and then they will connect to a ghost module so that we can control them with the computer, make the animations do whatever we want. So it's pretty easy to take a universal part like this and stick it into a part, whether it's for a GTR or a Civic or any kind of car you can imagine out there. It's universal stuff that's coming up with the end result. So I want to first make sure that everything fits right which it does. I know that end to end, I'm gonna be able to get my lens to sit and cover back down. And this is the kind of cool thing about these circuit boards for you know any kind of beginner use. They're really bendable. So that backing that I said was the, you know, for the ground connection, if I bend this by hand, it's actually gonna hold the shape a little bit and kind of create that little arch naturally. So that was not hard to do. You watched me do it and now it's gonna be able to sit a lot more flush to the board when we put it in place for the final installation. For right now, all I wanna do is solder a bunch of wires to it and then put our double-sided tape that we'll use to hold it in place and make sure that it's sitting pretty. Somebody, somebody that wasn't me, that's all I know, came up with the idea 
to just use something super basic like a board with nails in it or screws or in this case a 4x4 and so all I'm going to do right now is just wrap this thing around a bunch of these wires to get it the exact length I want. So that's one wire length and I need nine of them. So now I've got two, three, four. All right, so I've got nine wire lengths there. And all I need to do now is cut the ends and then I've got nine equal wire lengths. And I have shitty scissors. Wow. So that was just kind of a little cheater way if you're doing things, because you kind of have to do this a lot with sequential wiring is um, make a bunch of equal length wires. So that's definitely easier, especially if you're gonna do a lot of these things, not just nine, but like if I were to do both of those at the same time, that's 18 wires. But like I know with the old GTR lights when I was building them, that was 32 wires. It had to be super long and they had to be exact. And like, I don't know, that was a cool little trick right there. I'm gonna use the soldering iron now for this because I'm not touching the actual LEDs, but I've already tinned the end of these wires. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna tin all of these connections. And all that means is I'm just gonna put a little dab of solder on there before I try to connect the wire. And then it'll stick to that way easier. Go bitch. All right. So I already went through. I soldered all the ends of the wires and then I snipped them so that I only had as much wire length as I wanted. And then now when I go to make that connection, it just goes right into place and doesn't put up any kind of a fight. All right, so now we've got this. Like custom sequential lights, for most automotive guys that are afraid of wires, like literally afraid, like they don't want to ever mess with wiring, like this is a nightmare, this is the worst. It's really not that bad. These are just individual channels that hook up to the ghost module. So instead of having it look like this the whole way, we're gonna tightly and neatly run all these things through together and then they'll come out and then they'll actually be soldered to a ribbon cable like this and so it'll look more, after it's all said and done, like that. It'll just have one little connection at the end, be nice and clean. We can plug it in right to the ghost module, like we showed you guys, we solder all these little, little header connections on the ghost module itself when we make them. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do, now that I've got my, all my ground wires on here and my one power wire that powers up the whole thing, I'm gonna stick some tape on the backside and then I will put this thing in place where it's gonna stay on the side marker and I'm gonna run all of the wires out into one central place so that it keeps everything super clean. And then we'll hook them up to the ribbon cable. I've got these things all run into place how I want them. I just wanna make sure that because that looks neat and nice, I can tie off the all the different wires. Get one little central spot, keep everything tidy, make sure that they're not gonna come undone because you might not be able to see it very well, but just the thought of being able to see anything through that red lens on this side marker over time doesn't sound good. Whichever wire is the shortest, see it's that one right there. So I'm gonna cut all of these the same length as that. Now, when I hook them up to this, like to ribbon cable like this, then it's gonna be nice and clean, and it will still give me the, the length that I need to reach um, just somewhere in the car where you can access these wires without having to be like all the way up inside the bumper. So I think this is perfect. Now I just gotta solder these to this, and we're good to power them up. We will pull this thing off really quick, shoot them black, put them back on and reseal them so that they're finished and ready to deliver. So the next step is to just drill a hole and run these wires through. So before I connect any of these wires up to these, I wanna run heat shrink down each one of them. The idea is just that we are gonna make a solder connection 
and then permanently connect these wires to some other wires and we never want to have to think about them again. So before we make that solder connection, we're just running the heat shrink down and then we will cover it up, heat up the heat shrink and it will suck down around that part, making it a permanent wire connection that will just not fail ever. If you tried to do these with a bunch of individual little connectors, it would just be super bulky and that kind of defeats the purpose of using something like this to begin with, which is that nice, easy to install and plug in wire for the ghost module. Okay, so those are connected. Now we need to sit and find out each one of these things, what does what, because as it is now, they're in no particular order and we need to find out which one is powered up right there and then we will connect it to the first wire on this and then work down to the second one, second one on here and get all the way to the end. Everything has been soldered, heat shrink, and then the last step that we need to take before we power this thing up and check it is to hit some heat. I was just telling Kevin a second ago, when I hooked this thing up, one of the LEDs comes on and he said, what's a blown channel? And so I'll explain it. If I hook up power to this right now, there's nothing telling this ghost sequencer that it should be turning that LED on. So if I tap the turn signal, you'll see the other LEDs do what they're supposed to do. And if I turn on a show mode, the other LEDs will do their thing but we're stuck with this one LED that's on. And the reason for that is that when this was connected to a different set of lights, that set of GTR lights over there, it blew a channel because of something inside the LEDs on that circuit board. When it did that, it ruined the ability for that, that little channel, that ground throwing function that this thing has. It killed it so it just automatically throws out ground no matter what, which means there's no way I can turn that LED off unless I take the wire that it's currently hooked up to, I move it to a different wire on the ghost sequencer, like let's say that's wire three, and I move it over here to wire like 15, then I can just tell with programming, I can tell the ghost module to make sure that wire 15 takes the place of wire three, and that will fix it because I have all these unused channels. I'm only using nine, and I have 28 channels on the ghost unit which means that this thing can last for so many screw ups and figuring things out as you go and reprogramming is fast, it's super easy. So instead of working with the module that has a blown channel, I'm gonna plug it into a fresh sequencer and then we'll do some tests, make sure that everything works the way that it's supposed to and it won't ever have any blown channels to worry about. You can tell we've only got 20 wires but this thing can control up to 28 wire connections to the ghost module and all I'm gonna do is plug it in. So as you can tell right here, all these that aren't hooked up, they just kind of look a little bit gnarly. So something to do to keep them out of the way is just tape them up really quick. All right, so that looks better. We have the connection all ready to do. So all that I have to do is plug it in. Now I've got the wires that are coming into this. In the last video, I didn't talk too much about these because it only matters now really that we can talk about them. So we have at the very bottom of them, we have our power and ground wires at the corner of the ghost module. The next wire that we have is the brake wire input. So when this thing gets power, it's gonna think that the brakes are on and it's gonna make an animation to show that. Next wire that we have yellow is for turn signal. And then we have our show mode one, show mode two, and lastly we have our running light. So all of these inputs are what we soldered onto the ghost board before we potted them. The last thing that we have is an output wire that it just sends voltage directly from where this comes into the board straight back out to power up our LEDs and then all of those little connections are going to be the ground connection that gets sent out to each LED to control it. So this is basically connecting all of the LED ground wires and then we also have one wire coming from the LED board for power. We're going to hook that up here and now we have just the power and ground to hook up at the at the corner here. So we've already got ground hooked up. Let's hook up power and now we get to play around. So if I want to hit the brake lights for this car, that's what they look like. 
So that's got the triple flash, and then if you connect the brake again in a quick amount of time, it won't do a triple flash. But if you wait for a few seconds, and then you connect it, you get that cool effect. Next one that we've got is the running light. So we have a cool little opening animation that when you hook up the running light, it kind of dances on into place. Now granted, this animation is for a much longer stretch of LEDs, but it kind of works to show off this side marker for right now. So when you disconnect the parking light wire, that's the effect that you get. When you hit the turn signal, wow. I think this is a module for the actual round brake light, so it's thinking that it's a circle. <laughs> and then we've got our show mode. Wow, that's a really long one. And another show mode. Which, oddly enough, these all look really cool besides the turn signal on this. So that's it. We know that it works. We know that the module is doing the job that it's supposed to do. We've hooked up all of these different wires and we've separated all the individual ground connections to the LEDs. So that's literally the whole job and the last part of it is just covering this thing up, making this unit look pretty and then getting it onto a car. But as far as this thing goes, sequencing all of these LEDs, it was all done from scratch using nothing but a row of raw LEDs, some solder, some circuit boards, and then wherever that solder paste I have sitting around somewhere. So you can go make anything with that. You can make custom shapes. I can show you on another video later how I can cut and move the circuit boards so that it will retain a shape so you can get a steady curve or you can make a nice hard angle on it. But that is the best possible way that you can get something, turn it into a unique shape that will hold its form and make it do all kinds of animations that you program yourself using the ghost module. So there you have it. I'm not gonna make a lot of videos like this because as you can tell, maybe like 10, 12 minutes in, there was no more music, there was no more fancy little title cards or anything. It was just raw information teaching you what I know, how I do it, how I've been doing it, what works, what doesn't work. All of that stuff is so valuable to me and I can't imagine if I didn't have the last 10 plus years experience doing this stuff hands on, making mistakes and learning from them sometimes. But I don't want you guys to have to go through that same exact grueling process of learning slowly, 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 uh, which means that if there's some videos that I can put out that are gonna save you a huge amount of time, then I don't think that they need to be fancy. I don't think that they need to be dolled up for YouTube. And personally, I don't think that they're very exciting to anybody else but the guy who's really gonna do something about it. So they're not gonna live on YouTube. I think that's just all there is to it. I'm gonna keep putting out videos that I feel are helpful, my best stuff, the best stuff that I know. I will put it on YouTube in as big a chunks as people can stomach, but my guess is at 30 something minutes, very, very few people are still watching this. So if you are watching this, if you went all the way through it, you've seen my other content, you've seen what I can teach you and what there is to learn from Flyride and from myself, then you might actually want to go further and take on the online course that I'm putting together right now. And I'll just be honest with you, I need your help. I can't do it like this. I can't keep putting out a ton of crazy long videos that aren't really about anything besides just putting out knowledge and just teaching and showing you the way that I've used things. I'm not selling anything for the parts. I don't want you to buy LEDs from me. This is just so that you guys can learn about how to do the sequential stuff. We do sell the ghost module, so hey, thumbs up. You wanna support? Go buy yourself a potted ghost module and that will be a huge help to me. But the bigger picture here is that the online course is something that I'm passionate about because I know how much it's gonna help a lot of different people that struggle with the same things I struggle with now. And I wanna overcome those obstacles as well as knock down doors for guys that just wanna come into this strong and not have to be as patient as I have been and wait and wait and learn and watch technology grow. It's all here, it's all ready for the taking. So I definitely want you guys to reach out that are interested in going further, actually getting involved in a much more real way. And that's gonna be off of YouTube. It's gonna be on a completely dedicated website and um, the Facebook group, like all of the stuff to keep everybody together and to really make this thing great is the Lightsman. So 
you've heard it, I've talked about it, and I'm ready to go. So if you guys are, are willing, if you'll have me, if you think that I can teach you enough and I can be any sort of a mentor for you, then um, we'll go on the journey together. So you let me know, get in contact with me, figure it out, find a way, text, call, email, doesn't matter. Let's just make it happen and um, I'm ready if you are.